Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another mental health check. Um, try not to be too excited today because we're going to cover a pretty rich topic uh, that, that a lot of people don't necessarily want to uh, approach. And as always, here with me is Kimberly Smith. Thank you very much uh, for joining today, Kimberly. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, suicide and suicidal behaviors and uh, some of that depression. So why, why don't you tell us a little bit more about, just kind of intro us into why that's such a big thing, especially right now. Sure. Well, Travis, you know, thanks for having me. And, you know, I think one of the biggest things to dispel and just put right out there is the fact that it is not a bad thing to talk about suicide. Um, mm -hmm. So many people kind of avoid the subject or, you know, don't lean into tough topics like this because, you know, they're, they're afraid, right? Like mm -hmm. it's, it's harsh, right? It's about death. And mm -hmm. um, the thing is that about it, it actually gives somebody who may be suicidal or thinking suicidal thoughts, more time to think about it, right? Mm. So thoughts of suicide don't just impact people with mental health disorders either. Mm. Um, stress can absolutely lead to suicidal thoughts. Um, and right now we're all under excessive stress, mm. excessive anxiety about our jobs, our families, the state of the world, our communities, you know, political unrest, social injustice. So we're all feeling the stress and, you know, may sometimes feel a little hopeless out there. Mm. Um, you know, some people get to the point where they just really want to end the pain. You know, they, they feel like they're a burden and that that is really the only way out, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this now is because this is this has been a topic that's hit my friend group, uh, my sphere of influence, kind of, uh, in the recent history, last few weeks actually, um, and it, and it's not necessarily people that I was close to; it's people um, that my friends were close to, and, and so a lot of the people in my influence, our sphere of influence, I guess you could say, they're impacted by what comes next. They're impacted by, uh, I don't know is it, if it's called survivor's guilt or what, because they didn't see the signs that were leading up there. And uh, the people who thought that it was just too hard to carry on, they, their friends are left thinking that, you know, they did something wrong, that they could have prevented it somehow. And uh, so I, I really just want to raise a little bit more awareness about some of the signs to look for. Um, sure. and, and to tell people, hey, it's, it's okay to share that you're struggling. I mean, um, some of my close personal friends know that I'm I'm struggling quite a bit right now. It's a it's it's a challenging time. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of anxiety. Um, I've had to pivot a little bit more than I'm comfortable with uh, from a, from a career perspective. And there's just a lot of things happening in my my personal and professional life that just add to that. Um, so I, I don't want you guys to think that there's something wrong with you just because you're feeling these things. And that's also one of the reasons why I want to be such an advocate for mental health is, is to kind of share that you don't have to be some mentally unstable person to, uh, to have to deal with these types of things. Exactly. And, you know, it, it, it's grief, right? The aftermath mm -hmm. is, you know, there's a lot of questions involved in that grief right. process. And, you know, trying to find clarity, even in hindsight, right? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about suicidal behavior, um, there's lots of suicidal behaviors and I'll just go through, them, right? So obviously talking about it, if somebody is talking about suicide, if they're talking about feeling trapped, that they have no reason to live, that they're in pain, um, emotional or physical, uh, if somebody is acting recklessly, right? If mm -hmm. they're increased, of alcohol or drug use, withdrawing from activities that they once did, isolating from friends and family, planning it, right? If they are saying their goodbyes, giving away their possessions, if you notice any type of emotional turmoil, anxiety, aggression, depression, irritability, impaired problem solving, right? Like struggling to make maybe even simple decisions, um, those could definitely be red flags. And like you said, you know, everybody's feeling the stress right now. And I think this issue and this topic is much bigger than most people even realize. Mm -hmm. On a global basis, right, on a global level, there are 800,000 annually. That's one person every 40 seconds. And it's wow. the second leading cause of death 
for 15 to between 15 and 24 years old. Um, so that's pretty, those are pretty big numbers. Yeah. Yeah. And here in the U.S., um, more people actually die from suicide than in automobile accidents, which are wow. 10 cause of death. And every year, about 48,000 Americans die from suicide. 1.4 million people attempt it every year, right? Um, so it's it's a big issue. So what is that ratio? How many people actually attempt versus, I, I hate to use the word succeed, but I mean, how, what is that ratio? You, you mentioned uh, 1.4 million the attempts. wrong person, Travis. I'm not you, mad. you broke up just ever so slightly when you said how many people actually followed through with it, but you said 1.4 million attempted. So what, what is the, uh, the other yeah, figure? 1.4 1. 1. million attempt it every okay. year here in the United States and 48,000 Americans die by suicide. Oh. So if I'm going to cheat and use my calculator, which, you know, I'm going to have to do real quick. Um, 1.4 million. Yeah. That's a, uh, that's significant. That's only about that's less than 5% of people who actually attempt it succeed, mm -hmm. which means 1.4 million people actually attempt it. That's, that's a staggering number. It and is. when were these stats, by the way? So these are 2018 statistics. So those are even before the pandemic, before the lockdown, before a lot of this. Oh, wow. That's, um, yeah. And we, we do lag behind a little bit in our statistics, Travis, yeah. because it takes so much time to aggregate that data from right. all the different, you know, mortality databases mm -hmm. and things of that nature across no, our country and the globe. Understood. Uh, I just can only imagine how much more it is right now with people that were struggling for from the isolation uh, that they're not used to from lockdowns and from uh, the 40 million plus people who've filed for unemployment because they lost their jobs. The uh, yeah. staggering increase in both divorce and marriage. <laughs> both of these are life changes and that's what you do, right? You deal with life transitions. Uh, yeah. All these things, even if it's a positive thing, can add stress, right? And, and so Absolutely. I can only imagine in, in what, okay, what I want the entire audience to understand, if you take away nothing else from this, here are the staggering amount of numbers that, that were just thrown at you. And if you're somebody who's struggling with any type of depression, you're not alone. I mean, it's, it's very, very obvious that you're not alone. And so don't feel like you are, because that's, that's usually, I think what, what fits in people's heads is they think, oh, I'm so alone in this. I'm, I'm, it must be me. It's obviously not just you. Don't don't think that way. Don't isolate yourself. It's just going to make it worse, right? Correct. All right. So what? If we're struggling with that deep depression, what should be our first kind of step of action? Sure. I mean, if you yourself are struggling with depression and suicidal you know, please reach out to a therapist, um, mm -hmm. a licensed therapist, a psychotherapist, a psychologist, someone, right? Um, reach out to a family member, a close friend. If you feel like you are in such a place where you just cannot bear to seek alone and you need somebody to be there with you, mm -hmm. find somebody that can, you know, provide that support, who can sit with you while you call the mental health provider and make an appointment. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if you're in quarantine, um, you know, there are lots of different options for virtual therapy right. going on. Um, also, if you are in the moment, if you are in a moment of emotional crises and need help now, um, I have a couple hotlines and resources that I want to provide. So okay. the first one is actually 1-800-273-TALK. So that's 1-800-273-8255. And that's a suicide mm -hmm. prevention lifeline. Okay. And then and the other option, we'll put that in the video right here for people to see. Perfect. And then the other option is text talk to seven, four, one, seven, four, one. So text talk to seven, four, one, seven, four, one. And that is another suicide prevention lifeline. Um, 
So that's what we should do first if we're the ones that are experiencing it. If we see a, a friend that, that has, like you said, increased drug use, increased alcohol intake, they've been withdrawing, um, have been acting either depressed or aggressive, like you said, some of the behavior changes that we should be looking for, how should we reach out as a friend? What, what should we do first? Yeah, I think, you know, always coming from a place of love and concern is mm -hmm. a positive thing, right? Um, and offering that support, right? So really asking them, you know, I, I'm struggling myself a lot right now. You know, are you struggling with anything? You know, I've, I've noticed that, you know, there seems to be a little bit of change in your demeanor. And I want to make sure you know how much I love you and care about. And, you know, have you been, have you been struggling lately? You know, leave it as an open-ended question. You know, ask them specifically if, you know, have you had any thoughts about, you know, hurting yourself or about suicide, right? Like, I, this has been tough for you, and I see that mm. you're, you're in a low place. Um, and then also offering support, asking, how can I support you right now? How mm -hmm. can, you know, and letting them answer that question, or even providing an offer to, hey, do you, do you want me to sit with you while you um, call and, and, and make an appointment? Or mm. do you want me to refer you? I have a good referral for a counselor or a therapist that I've used in the past right? If you have something like that to give. And if the person that we're kind of trying to reach out to, if, if the way we start that conversation, it doesn't feel like it's going very well, would you recommend just maybe attempting to spend a little bit more time with them, just figuring out ways to kind of hang out, invite them places, make them feel included? Or, or is, would that be a good course of action? Yeah, you know, I think that just any form of engagement that you can have with them, right? Mm -hmm. Whether virtually or in person or, you know, dropping off a meal or maybe some, you know, suggesting, you know, just time spent together, right, to get them out of their house, to, you know, get them excited or in, in a good mood by trying to, you know, lift their spirits and, and have a good, um, I think that's always helpful, right, and it just demonstrates mm -hmm. how loyal you are as a friend and as a family member um, and, you know, helps them feel supported when they're not feeling supported. Understood. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I know that we've we've talked a lot about a heavy topic today, so I, I don't want to uh, I don't want to overload anybody with too much information. Uh, but I'd like you guys to just kind of sit with this for a minute. You know, before you just scroll on through if you're looking at this on social media or YouTube or whatever, if you're looking to do something else, um, I, I ask just, you'd spend maybe one to two minutes just thinking about, is there somebody in my sphere of influence that are meeting some of these uh, challenges right now? Is there somebody that I know that's um, just changed their food or drinking habits uh, that have been showing uh, additional aggression, that have been just extremely withdrawn compared to what they're usually like. If you're seeing these changes, reach out to them, be a friend foremost, uh, because that's probably really what they need most right now. All right. Kimberly, as always, thank you. Um, yes, thank I think you, Travis.